Hey, it's John and Mike for dashdudes.com, and this is another uh, example of Mike says, Hey, we got to do a Brew Dudes video. And I'm like, All right, cool, cool, cool. And he says, uh, Well, I don't, well we're going to brew. Uh, I don't know. And I say, uh, I hope you have a beer. He's like, Yeah, I do. Come up and we'll drink it and we'll talk about it. And uh, that's what's happening right now. So I don't know what this is, but it's here in front of me. It looks delicious. So, Michael, please tell me what it's all about. I will start to taste it. And uh, I don't know, kind of calculate what I'm going to say after you're done describing okay. what you did. So this beer this is, beer. Um, you know, we were talking in a video, a few videos before. It's finally summer here. It's starting to get warm. So I've got some really light beers that we can drink. Yep. But I also wanted something more in that fruity hoppy vein. My wife likes hoppy beer, so I like to make sure, sure. we keep the wife happy and stuff like that. Um, so Cheers. this beer is, you know, in an attempt to satisfy that need to have something on draft. Uh, that's hoppy, but also something light and refreshing. So for the summer time. So this is a this is a hoppy wheat beer. That's what okay. I'm calling this. Um, but it's also there's a little bit of experimentation going on here for some future ideas that I've got. Cheers. So uh, let me just do the recipe real quick. So it's Pilsner malt, my favorite Belgian Dingemann's Pils. This is a six, uh, five gallon batch. Um, so this is five pounds of the Belgian Pils, which is about 46 percent. It's white wheat malt, two and a half pounds or 23 percent. It's also then two and a half pounds of flaked wheat, 23%. And the reason for that is I thought I had plenty of wheat malt, but I didn't. <laughs> but I had wheat. plenty of Throw flaked wheat. wheat. In there. So <laughs> I said, I'll just split the difference. And it's also got 12 ounces of honey malt in it. Oh, so I was okay. I, I was working on this idea. I remember some of the earlier New England IPA sure. days, how that little bit of honey malt, yeah. how sort of lift up some fruity hop bit. character. So I just wanted to, that's really sort of where most of the experimentation is coming from in here. Before you get to the hops, yes. can I guess a couple? Oh, please do. <laughs> is is there a, like a, a healthy, uh, helping uh, hand of Simcoe in this? There is no Simcoe in what? this. What? I thought this is like screaming Simcoe. All right, go on. You have any other choices? No, forget about it. Okay, okay. So this, <laughs> so, so here we go. So this beer is... Um, so there is no bittering hops in this beer. Okay. So but what I st started with, I mean, this will be debatable. So at the 10-minute mark, I boiled this thing for 60 minutes. At the 10-minute mark, uh, I put in one ounce each of Idaho 7. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yep. And uh, Zythos. All right. All right. Forget about it. <laughs> I'm off the beaten path. Right and now, so one ounce of, this will make you feel at least, okay, mosaic. Okay. One ounce of mosaic. All right, all right. So it's a blend of, uh, so it's three ounces total <laughs> at 10 minutes. And so the reason for that is just trying to really back end load and just see how much yeah. bitter character I could get with Dang, that much getting... hop load. So it's, so this this actually takes you back about 10 or 15 years to like hop bursting, Yeah. right? Um, so that's that. And then I dry hopped, again, with one ounce of Idaho 7, one ounce of Zythos, and one ounce of Citra Lupamax. Oh, okay. Just to try to get yep. a little curveball into yep. the presentation. I fermented this with, I don't know if I've ever used this yeast. It's, I've been brewing a long time, so who knows. Uh, y yeast 1010 American Wheat Ale. Yeah. Um, so I don't think I've ever used that yeast before. Um, this baby started at uh, 1044, so I was going for a really moderate uh, gravity. And it finished at 1005. So it is Not it bad. itself is then pushing about five percent. I was looking for four and a half percent, but I got some really great attenuation um, out of this beer. So how did I get that attenuation? Well, this was a prolonged mash, about um, sixty minutes at one hundred and forty nine, and then I ramp. I let it slowly ramp for another twenty minutes until I get to mash out. Um, so I'm getting really big full conversion here. Uh, this is spring water again. I'm sort of favoring chloride with two grams of calcium chloride, okay. one gram of calcium sulfate, and one gram of magnesium chloride. A little bit of lactic acid in the beginning to get my pH right for the for the rest of the beer. So, um, so yeah. So, what are you what are you getting on this? Oh beer? boy. Well, uh, I, I said Simcoe because it's like yeah. the, the dank. Yeah, some dankness. So dank I went with the Idaho that. Seven because there's been some conversations, um, you know, lately about how. In hops, they're starting to talk about these things called survivables. <laughs> yes. These, these compounds that'll make <laughs> yeah. it from the boil that don't just necessarily drop out. Idaho 7 is supposed to be high in survivables. And I think what I'm getting on here, because on top of some of the fruit character, I'm definitely getting some pungent, like uh, like a green onion-y yeah. type of thing, right? Yep. Which which works if you're into that thing. I was looking for something a little more fruity, but I think, um, you know, in Zythos is a little bit in that 
that that vein too. I don't so. think I've ever proved that Zyphos. Zyphos is listed, if I remember right, is listed a little bit because they all are. They don't want you to know this, but they're all citrus piney. Yeah. But then this one lists as being sort of um, tropical, and then they sort of downplay citrus piney. Um, and Idaho Seven's in the same boat. It's got some of that. Um, supposed to have a little bit more of that apricot, pineapple, but then yeah. there's a little bit of citrus piney on the other. Yeah. But I think, but so, but here's another great thing for me too. I'm and this is something that I'm trying to figure out how best to research this. And I'd love to take comments on this. I think that some of these super sexy hops in the homebrew market are generally garbage because the, the big breweries are getting the very best lots. So this Idaho 7 or Zythos, the reason why it's so oniony is because this could just be a garbage lot, right, of hops. And I just think in the homebrew market, you have your favorite commercial beers, and it, they might tell you this is Galaxy and this is that. I mean, Galaxy, they've had a hard time growing quality Galaxy for the last couple of years, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think in the homebrew market, we are actually not getting the premium hops. So you can get great Cascade, great Centennial, like the old standards. You can sure. get beautiful, clean grapefruit from Cascade. Yeah. But these other hops, they're just not growing them in the mass volume of some of those other varieties. So that when the, the pro brewers who have contracts go in and say, I need my Idaho 7 because like, um, you know, Michael Tonsmeyer and, and Scott Janish, you know, they've talked them up so much that they probably have great contracts for Idaho 7, that the rest of us are probably getting garbage. Right um, now, this isn't bad. I like this beer. Yeah, um, it just doesn't hit the mark that I was going for. Right, right. Yeah, but it has a lot of really unique hop character mm -hmm. that's unique to these lots of hops. You know what I'm saying? Feel that. Um, so I don't get a lot of citra. What I would want out of citra on the nose. I if I am, it's certainly struggling to overcome. Yeah. The, the garlic, green onion. Yeah, I was going to pick on the other hops that you mentioned, which are the Mosaic and the Lubamac Citra. Yep. I was I was hoping for a little bit more Citra um, flavor in yeah. here, and I'm just not getting it. Mm -mm. It's it's that danky, I think pine is what I'm feeling yep. more of. Yep. I was like, there's something green here. Yeah, it's very green. Very <laughs> green. I want to talk green. more about it. But overall, hmm. I guess I wish it was just a little more brighter. Yep, you know? I agree. Okay. I agree. Okay. Yeah, I think the fermentation character. This is a good exercise too in tasting this um, the base beer under it, which yeah. was like really part of the experiment. Yeah. I love the color. Oh yeah. This is like what I would you know, this grain bill with a a, a swamp load of Amarillo and yeah. Cascade or something would be beautiful. Wonderful. Right. Um, so I think that's good. Um, <laughs> and you're going to see this grist bill show up again in some other experiments that Can't aren't necessarily wait. hoppy beers. So yeah. um, that's really what this was about. And I, I had packages of Zythos in Idaho 7. So I was like, I want to try these hops. So um, we again, never did a smash beer with Zythos. I don't think we have. Yeah. I don't think we have. We yeah. should. We should. And I can't wait to take that crappy lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, really I could be try. totally off base, but I really genuinely think when, because it just can't be that when people talk about how great Hop X is, and then when I brew with it, it's not even remotely close to that. Yeah. And I don't mean like I get tangerine and they're talking pineapple. I mean, it's not even remotely fruity. It's not even yeah. remotely, it just, and I think it has to do with Maybe that lot was the last to be harvested because though in early harvest, late harvest, mid harvest changes the profile sure. on the vine, just like wine grapes, yeah. right? Just like no, wine grapes. They wait till the right time and then they get out there and pick them because they think it's perfect, you know? And it's the same thing with hops too. So yep. um, I just don't know in the, the homebrew marketplace where are the hops really generally coming from. Um, and two, us being way higher on the East Coast versus what's happening to, I mean, maybe they just don't travel well. And, you know, maybe our shops out here, leave them on the the, the, the shipping dock before they go in the freezer. Who knows, you know what I mean? Don't. I'm not picking, I'm just, I'm just really curious about the process. I know, You know, too. I got to get all Stan Hieronymus on this stuff and do the, <laughs> invest, the hard hitting investigating reporting on this thing, you know? Excellent, excellent. We got to get Stan on the show. I know, bring him on. He'll be like, all right, I guess I'll talk to you twerps. <laughs> Um, no, I think as this warms, I am getting more, uh, a little bit more yeah. tropical thing, but you're right. The strongest, it's that danky, 
I know you say green onion thing. That's how I perceive it. No, no, no. Yeah. It's, it's, I think you're right. It's. Uh, I think we've had other smash beers where you're like, this is diesel. And I'm yeah, like, diesel. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is diesel. So it's like diesel, green onion, and then dank yeah. is somewhere here. Yeah. Um, in any case, I, I just wish you... I know you were going for more fruity. Yeah. I know your wife. I know what she yeah, enjoys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I, is that weird? I'm sorry. <laughs> Did I just, like, I just, I just We've been friends a long time. I crossed the line. We've been friends I, a long time. I, yeah, I know we are, but, like, that's just not right. Wrong channel. In a different channel. That's a different dude's channel. In any case, let's, let's try to figure back, get back to beer. Um, no, I, I think that she was probably more, like, I know that she would want something more fruity, more tropical, yeah. and this doesn't hit the mark. So, what's your next step here? Uh, to, to retreat the, yes. into those classics yeah. that I know how to control, yeah. and I don't worry so much about the quality of the lot, mm. I think, right? Mm. I mean, like I said, hitting some of my favorite... I, I, I love the presentation of um, that grapefruity tangerine quality of Cascade and Centennial playing yeah. together. Bring it on. And um, even Amarillo is... Amarillo Amarillo is sort of sometimes... Um, not as orange forward as they say it is. And I think that's a, a lot issue too. Right? I agree. Because you know? I've brewed some, sometimes with it and like, wow, yeah, I really love this. Because uh, one of my favorite things in a wheat beer is orange flavor. Like, and and I, sure. I prefer like a good wheat beer that I'd like to put an orange wedge in it, right? A UFO. Exactly, exactly. Making a, a, a wit beer uh, without coriander and stuff in it, but I, I'll put a ton of orange yeah. peel in a wit beer. Yeah. Um, I love that character. So if I can get that from some hops, um, then I, I really prefer to try to those hops, right? right. So I would retreat into All those right, zones. Right. But just you know what? It just speaks for digging even more deeper into our Smash Beer series and and playing with more and more of these hops and understand how this stuff works. Well, thanks for the uh, segue because more of those Smash Beers will be coming our way in the coming weeks because I um, once I figure out getting the right single malt for it. <laughs> I have the hops. It's just like, yeah, getting the single malt sometimes is a little more difficult. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, thank you for this. We've learned a little bit about this. I will certainly drink this uh, at your next uh, barbecue, and it's going to be wonderful. Awesome. And, and I'll uh, say hi to your wife, too. All right. <laughs> I just want to like see if you do a spit take. Uh, thanks for watching. If you've you know made it this far, I appreciate it. Uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel because we do this kind of thing every single week. For John and Mike, brewdashdudes.com. Cheers.